Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Let's stand on your feet and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. He's called you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and give the Lord some praise in this place. Hallelujah. 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 God has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He's called you because he chose you before the foundations of the earth. And that's enough to give him praise. Not only did he call you, but he predestined and prearranged everything for you. Hallelujah. And there's no demon in hell that can stop you from getting everything that God has for you. Hallelujah. He called you. He gave you power. He gave you authority. He blessed you. He increased you. He multiplied you. Give him praise for that. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. When we're singing the song, Break Every Chain, right? That's a good song. Praise God. When he sang, he said that you are the army. Exceeding grace is the army. Hallelujah. There is no church in this city. I've looked. There's no church that's preaching what our man of God is preaching. We are the army. How You can sit down. We are the army. Hallelujah. You have to make a decision to be a part of this army. There is an army rising up. With the word that's being preached in this house, there is an army that is rising up. But it's your choice to be a part of what God is doing in this church. It's your choice to be a part of what God is doing in this city. And we, I believe, I'm telling you, the Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth and great darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise over you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited about the glory of the Lord being seen upon you? Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. I am excited about the glory of walking around and nothing but glory is seen on me. When people see me, that's what they seen on Jesus. When he said, come and follow me, they dropped everything and followed him. They saw the glory of the Lord upon him. So when we come out and we say, come leave your sin and come and follow me to the sanctuary, they'll do it because the glory of the Lord is on you. Hallelujah. When you're at work and you're telling them to come with you to church, they're going to come because they see what's on you. Hallelujah. But you have to make a decision to drop everything and follow him. That's what we're going to talk about today, dropping everything and follow him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Yes. Amen. I'm ready to flow in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let the prophetic flow in this place. Let the power of the deliverance power of God flow mightily in this place. I'm excited about that. I'm confident that God wants to do a work in this place today. He wants to get us ready that when our man of God returns, they're, they're just ready to preach. They're just ready to preach and it's going to fall on good ground. Right? They've already, it's already been falling on good ground, but it's even the ground good. Amen. Because I know when I'm here, it's falling on good ground. Because I do what's being preached. I take the word and I mix it with faith. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to call, this is sheep to sheep. That's the title of the message. Sheep to sheep. Right? Sheep, I'm a sheep, you're a sheep. Sheep to sheep. Right? We know we have an apostle and apostle over this place, but it's sheep to sheep. I'm going to talk to you. I'm sitting right there where you guys are sitting. I'm receiving the word just like you're receiving. Sheep to sheep. Right? In the subtitle, let's do it for the kingdom. Sheep to sheep, let's do it for the kingdom. Because it's some of us in here that's still holding on to stuff. Let's do it for the kingdom. Let's let it go for the kingdom. Let's let them go for the kingdom. Let's let the TV show go for the kingdom. Let's fast and pray for the kingdom. Let's let our tithe go for the kingdom. Come on, let's let our seed be sown for the kingdom. Let's not consider ourselves, reckon yourself to be dead. But do it for the kingdom. Hallelujah. We know that soul man trying to rise up but put him under subjection to the spirit for the kingdom. Separate yourself from that unhealthy relationship for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give yourself to sin. Do it for the kingdom. The Bible says that he's put the kingdom on the inside of us. Right? If he's put the kingdom on the inside of you, wherever you go, the kingdom should show up. He's put the kingdom on inside of you to manifest what's on the inside of you to bring it out of you. The kingdom, the Bible says the kingdom suffer violent, but the violent take it by force. So what they're saying is this kingdom word that we're receiving, we have to take it by force. You can't take this sitting down. You can't take this just Sunday and Wednesday. You have to get up Monday morning and take it by force. That means open your Bible and read the scripture. You got to wake up Tuesday and fast and pray. Open the word of God and take it by force. You can't take this word just sitting and receiving. It has to be taken by force. You hear what I'm saying? I learned that not too long ago. I was, I'm here. I've been here for like almost six years, right? And I'm coming to pastor, and I'm talking to him about stuff that he preached five years ago. And it's just now getting in my heart. That's good. Amen. But it should have got in my heart 
four years ago, right? Because I'm deciding to press in. Now, if I would have decided to press in four years ago, who knows what I would have been doing right now. But I'm telling you today to make a decision to press in like you've never pressed before. To tear down every stronghold, to destroy every yoke and lift every burden that's around you or that's on you. Right? Because only religion will keep you from pressing in. Only poverty and pride will keep you from pressing into where God is trying to take you. You hear me? Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 25. The Lord said, I was praying even last night. The Lord said to me, it's going to be a good, it's going to be the best time for some and the worst time for others. It's the best time for some and the worst time for others. I'm praying today that as I minister, that I win your soul to the Lord. That's my prayer. That I win your soul. Not, it's some people here that need to be saved. Yes, that's right. It's some people here that need to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Not with just with your mouth. The Bible says with your heart confesses unto righteousness. Right? So with your heart, somebody in here needs to be saved. And I decree and declare that you're going to be saved today. Right? Somebody in here needs to come to know Jesus on a deeper level, in a deeper way. Somebody needs to be full of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of Huckabashai. Somebody in this place. Okay? Because I'm telling you what's going on in this. I wish you can see. I'm going to pray the prayer. Lord, open their eyes so that they may see. They can see. I remember last year the Lord said, the Lord came to me and said, it's brewing. The atmosphere is brewing. We know what, when coffee brews, you can't see it. When you first put coffee on, you can't see it coming out right away. Right? You can't see. When you put it on, you just have to walk away and believe that it's brewing. And it's going to come out. Sometimes I like to stand there and watch to see how long it takes to come out. But all you have to do now, if it's brewing and you never stick. Now, I went to playing with a coffee pot one day. And I said, Lord, well, what makes it come out when it's up in the top? Because when you put the coffee grinds in there and you pour the water and you turn it on, it starts to brew. But what makes the coffee release? When you stick the coffee jug under there or the, the pitcher under there, it presses something and it causes a release. So that's why we're getting the word about pressing in. It's going to cause a release. Come on. Press in. It's going to cause a release. Come on. I've been pressing in. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been, listen, seeking the face of God because I'm pressing in because I know that this atmosphere is pregnant with destiny. It's filled with miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles. It is filled with your house. It's filled with your spouse. It's filled with your car. It's filled with everything that you have. It's filled. It's pregnant with miracles. This city needs to see a change today. It's filled with everything that you can ever desire. The atmosphere is filled with it, but you have to press to get it. Come on. Apostle and prophet can't press for us. Apostle John, prophetess Kimberly, they can't press for us. They can teach us to press, but they can't press for us. So my job today is to win your soul that when you leave this place today, that you will press like you've never pressed before. Amen. Amen. That, that you will press. When I win your soul, that's when your mind, your will, and your emotions to the Lord, that you don't miss another Sunday, that you don't miss another Wednesday, that you don't miss another day of prayer, that you don't miss another day of fasting. That is my agenda today is to win you completely to the Lord. Amen. All right. Praise God. I just want to let you know that up front. So when I call on you and I pray for you, I'm, I'm praying I'll win you totally to the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We're going to look at Matthew 25. This was a good chapter. And I was reading, the Lord said, pr pr minister this chapter. We learn this house through, through the uh, preacher teacher that you have textual messages. You have all kinds of messages. This was a textual. We're going to read through the chapter and we're going to meditate and we're going to see what it says because God said that this is the best time for some. And the worst time for others. For those of you that are pressing, for those of you that are seek his face, and I'm praying that's every single one of you in this place. It's going to be the best time for you because the prophet came. He stood right there. He said in this next move that none will be left behind. So I, when I pray for you every day, I stand on that word. In this next move that none of you will be left behind. That everybody here will be, prosper, will be prosperous, that everyone will be filled with the spirit, that everyone will walk in infallible proofs, that everyone will receive wisdom, that everyone will get revelation in their own prayer time. I'm praying that for you. That everyone will walk around with power to do miracles. The Bible said that you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. So if you're praying in tongues and you have power, you have promise to make the lame walk, to make the deaf hear. You have that power right now on the inside of you. The Bible said that these signs shall follow those who believe. Right? We know that cars and clothes and all that stuff, we expect that. Right? I like cars and clothes. I like watches. Praise God. I found a watch, y'all, that you have to put an order to buy it. What? And it's a million dollars. And I got to ask you, can I buy it? I'm going to get that watch, y'all. Yeah. Amen. So listen, I understand that we need evidence on the outside, that we need tangible evidence on the outside. I understand that. 
right? We understand we need cars, we need houses, we need several houses to put people in. That's my agenda to win their souls and put them, take them out of their environment and put them in a new one, right? That we have to do that. People come in and get their, give their lives to Christ, and when they come, they're really serious, but they have to go back into their same mess. But how much more when they come and give their life to, the, to Christ and go back there and see somebody that can put them in a new house, that can put them in an atmosphere that's filled with the Word of God so they can keep growing? That's what happened for me. I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, okay, Lord, help me understand totally what's my assignment. He said, do for, do for them what somebody did, what I did for you, right? Y'all know Miss Barber. When I got saved, it wasn't two months before, she, before I moved all the way. I used to live over here. I moved all the way across town. That gave me the opportunity. I hardly ever came back over here except when it was for church. But it gave me an opportunity to come, to come away from some things and have time to fast and pray. Years. Fasting and praying. That's why when Miss Pauline said, she told me, I, I, listen, I don't have the testimony. Amen for those who come back. Amen. But I don't want to go back out and come back. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go and be out for months and then come back. And you don't have to do that anymore. Hallelujah. You don't ever have to do that. Even in your mind. Now, in my mind, I came out, came, went out and came back. We're going to deal with that, too. In your mind, you can go out and come back. You can stop listening, stop praying, and come back. I've done that. Amen. Okay, Matthew 25, we're going to read the first one. We're going to talk about the ten virgins. Some wise and some foolish. It was good for the wise, but it was bad for the foolish. You hear me? It was good for the wise, but it was bad for the foolish. I have the King James. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with, in the vessels with the lamp. And the bridegroom tarried, they, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight they carried, the cry was made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So what that's saying is that, Behold, your manifestation came, go out to meet it. Right? Behold, your manifestation is in this city, go out to get it. Your business is out there in this city. Go out and get it. The man of God says that we sow in the kingdom, we reap in the world. So your manifestation is already ready for you, Janika. Go out and get it. Amen. It's already ready. Go out and get it. Amen. And so we see that we have five wise and five foolish. The wise people took their vessel, took, took, took it with them. They took their lamp with them so they'll keep, they took oil with them so that they'll keep burning. Right? And some of them, they just took their lamp with the oil that was in it. And it would, but we understand later on in the chapter, it went out. So when sometimes when you're waiting for your manifestation, you have to take your own word with you. We have the word that's being preached in this house, but the five foolish, that's all they had was what they can remember that the pastor said. Come on. They can remember what the prophet said. They can remember the prophecies. I've been there. I can remember prophecies. I, God has blessed me. I can remember some prophecies from two years ago, right? I can remember prophecies. I can remember that, you know, that we are prosperous, that we're rich and that we're whole. But you have to take your own oil. You have to have your own word. I can remember when the Apostle Anderson says that we're in this city, that we're going to go forth in this city, that we're going to pierce the city, that other churches may come behind us, that we're training and teaching ministry. I have that word. I carry that with me, and I thank God for that. But let's just talk about when I was believing God for, my, for the condo that I have now. I was believing God for that. I know that in this house that we should receive houses and all kind of stuff. So I searched the scripture. I'm looking for houses. I'm looking for stuff. I'm like, okay, Lord. We can get some houses. We can move. The man of God, the woman of God moved so I can move too because I'm submitted to that. They move. I can move. But what did I have to do? Can I just stand on the fact that they moved? Can I just stand on the fact that, that this is the time and the season for us to increase and prosper and that, okay, I'm going to move and I'm going to just go pray. All right, Lord, move me. So when I started looking for apartments, I got a little weary. I was like, oh, God. Whew. This thing here. This is not cute. But I was looking according to what I can make, what I can pay. I was looking according, and then the pastor said, don't look. He came to me. He said, at least don't look according to your paycheck. He said, go stretch your faith out. Stretch your faith. If you just do what you can do, there's no faith working, and God's not working for you. Stretch your faith out. I said, okay, pastor. So I went back, and I went looking again. I said, okay. And I saw some more, and I liked them. They stretched my faith. Amen. But then I got a little tired. How many of you know that my lamp was going out? My lamp was going out. So I got a little tired. I'm like, Lord, now you told And I heard God say move. He told me to move. He brought a release in for me to move. Because I had a roommate. He brought somebody in that would take over the place where I was living, and I can go move by myself. Come on now. He, brought, he opened up the door. He gave me the way of escape, but my lamp was going out. 
So what did I have to do? I said, okay, Lord, I recognize now I need my own word. I have, the, I have the foundation. See, when a man and woman of God come up here, he gives us a foundation, a solid foundation, because everything they preach comes out of the word of God. So we know that when, we, when we're going on what they've said, it's a solid foundation for everything that they're saying, right? So I said, okay, Lord, give me my own word. Let's go to Isaiah. I'm going to show you my word. Go to Isaiah 51. Y'all okay? Amen. Go to Isaiah 51, verse 2. It's highlighted in my Bible. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Now, is house anywhere in that scripture? Huh? House is nowhere in that scripture. But I needed my own oil. That's the word that I stood on to go where I am now. Because I said, Lord, you said, okay. He gave me revelation on that scripture. He said, I called you alone. I had a roommate. He said, I called you alone. To bless you and to increase you. When I went, okay, Lord, I stand on that word. I called you alone. It wasn't two weeks later. It wasn't two weeks later. I walked through the door. And I, listen, I gave a smile and a thank you and walked back out. Amen. I didn't pay, y'all know the testimony. I ain't pay rent for almost two months. Right? And it's way above what I could do. Because I had to go get my own word. Some of us are trying to last and your situation is outlasting you because you don't have your own word. You have to get your own word. I'm telling you. It's that serious. You have to dig in the word. You're getting upset because it's not working for you. What they said is not working for you, but you're not taking what they said and going back on yourself and mixing it with faith. That's why it's not working for you. Right? If they said that you shall bear children, you take that word back home and you meditate it on yourself and you start to meditate and believe God for your own word, and I guarantee you that children will come forth. They said that the business that you should, have, that you should go in and out and find pasture, right? You should go in and out. You go home and you meditate on the scripture and you let that word come alive in you. You hear what pastor says, read it until it talks back to you. When it talks back to you, you now have a rhema. And what happens when you have a rhema? Go to Luke 137. Come on, y'all. Come on. Hallelujah. In the Amplified, please. This is what happened when you have a rhema. For with God, nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. How many of you still stand on that scripture since we've been preaching it? There's not enough hands, y'all. Come on. I'm winning your soul today. That's not enough hands. When I say, how many of you still from time to time can He preached a whole series on that scripture by itself. So we should still be meditating on it. The words that he's preaching, it should be adding to our dictionary. When I call a dictionary, the words that you have in your heart. Your heart is the dictionary, right? When th something comes up to you, you have to find the word that's already in your heart. So now we can, some of us can quote that scripture without even reading it. Because you're meditating on that word. How many of us, when, when we had the sin teaching, that we all had some problem going on in our life? When we had it, because the word came forth, somebody had a little sin going on, and I did too, amen. Right. Because I was like, Lord, why? How we get all the way to teaching about temptation? Right, because you was tempted. Right. And, and you didn't quite pass that temptation. I said, well, amen. Amen. So when Pastor Kim gave up and gave, how many of you had, had something going on? Now, it ain't always sexual sin and all this kind of crazy stuff. That's elementary. Don't be doing that. Stop doing that. Amen. I'm for real. Stop. Nah. Okay, now raise your hand if you had something going on. I had a little bit of unbelief going on, right? Come on. I had a little bit of something going on with my mouth, talking, saying, judging, critic. Come on now. I'm going to put myself out there because I'm going to win your soul and hopefully through my testimony. I have some stuff going on. Now, how, now remember when, when Pastor Kim talked the eight steps. How many of us went back and, and did that? Come on. Now, everybody raise their hand. They had a problem. Now, the eight steps, some, some people looking at me like, what? Eight steps. I took them eight steps and I did it, right? Now, you know, I work in the, I work in the, in the addiction profession. That's why I work currently. I'm about to leave now, but that's why I work currently, right? So I took those same eight steps and applied it to the program that God is birthing out into me, right? Because 12 steps, that, they're not working. 12 steps not working. People be clean for eight years and relapse. 12 steps not working. But this word that Pastor Kim did, I promise you, I told you, when I finished those eight steps, I, doubt was gone. Fear was gone. 
I studied on fear. I took those eight steps and I applied it to fear. So again, how many of not going to go home and do, look at your area, find your notes, go back on the message and find those eight steps? Come on, y'all. Raise your hand. Who going to come and find those eight steps? We need this, y'all. We can't have little sin tripping us up. I recently, I had, I was doing something. The Lord told me to go get a new job. Amen. I said, okay, Jesus, I'm going to go get a new job. Praise the Lord. So I said, okay, I'm believing God for a new job, and I put in my two weeks. How many of y'all, that's so backwards? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm thinking I'm in faith. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get me a new job. I'm finna, Lord Jesus. I'm going to get me a new job. Yeah. Here go my two weeks. I told my boss she was all happy for me. Amen. So the day before the two weeks came, mm. amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. How, I didn't properly follow the instruction, right? So when I went, so I'm telling you how loving and how, the, how that word has power in your life. I went to my man. I knew I was doing something wrong because I wouldn't tell them that I put in my two weeks. Now, you, anything you hide from your parents, you know it's wrong. I'm putting myself on out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't tell them. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just show them when I go get my testimony. They're going to know I got the job. I put in my two weeks early. And my business going to prosper. Yeah, disobedience. Because I tell them everything. So I just didn't happen. To, and then I kind of had a meeting with them. I kind of slid it in there, but slid it back. It's like, yeah, that was like, so, you know, mom, she don't miss nothing. Mom don't miss nothing. She texts me, so I need clarity. Did you find a new job? It's like, amen. Yes, but I'm waiting on the manifestation. She didn't text me back. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's cool, because I knew what that meant. Amen. So I texted him. I said, the day before my two weeks, now I was still, I still had faith, and I know that God is going to deliver. I'm sure of that, right? Because he set a love upon me, I would deliver. I set my love upon him, he will deliver. I've set my love up, set your love upon him, he will deliver. Amen. So I went, and I said, okay. So I emailed Dad. You know, I, I wasn't going to call. I said, okay. Dad, this is what happened. I put him in two weeks, a week and a half ago. Tomorrow's my uh, exit day, which I wasn't scared. I promise you, even the job that I wanted, it didn't come like I thought it would. I was not scared. And that night when I found out a note, I came and I worshiped. My worship was better than then, so it increased. So I wasn't afraid. And I said, okay, Dad, what, what, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, I can believe that Monday morning I'm going to be in somebody's job and I'm going to be praying. I had my sister praying for me. Monday morning I need to be somewhere because I could have just, it, rebellion tried to come into my mind. It, it'll do that. So I was like, no, you know what, even if you don't find a job, you can start your business, take your last few, you know, because when you leave, they give you a little package or whatever, and you can take that and start your business and do your business. And in, in my heart, said, prove them wrong. That's the devil. Because the pastor said, do not quit your job to start a business. Come on now. Do not quit your job to start a business. So here I am. I'm praying that whole night. I'm trying to convince myself. I'm like, I'm going to still look for a job. It's not total rebellion. I'm going to still look for a job. But I'm going to try to I'm gonna start my business in the meantime until that job come through. Come on, y'all don't get that too. Don't be looking at me crazy. Come on now. So I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to prosper. And I went to pray that night because, you know, you got to pray day and night. You got to pray. So I'm praying. Nothing. Hello? I mean, can I get an angel, a presence, or something? Like, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Can I get a, I love you, or something? The Lord will say something, y'all. You will, you know, nothing. I, listen, I'm praying. I started praying about 11. I ain't going to sleep to one something in the morning. Like, Lord, please. I'm walking around like, Lord, what's going on? Like, you know, I'm praying. I'm pressing. I'm like, okay. Sometimes that the presence will come when he wants you to press a little harder. And then the presence will come in. I understand that. But you know when you don't did something and you ain't getting nothing. Nothing's happening. There's no prayer. There's nothing. You're not getting anything. And then some people, come on, there's pride so deep in some of our hearts that you'll keep going like he said something. You'll, hey amen, good time. You know you ain't hear nothing. Stop playing. You know Jesus ain't said nothing. You ain't hear nothing. You weren't, even, you weren't even encouraged after your time. Even if you don't hear nothing, you're at least encouraged after your time with the Lord. You came out looking the same way you went in. But you're going to keep, you're just going to, I'm going to start my business. I'm going to prove them wrong. They don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. Come, I'm serious. I'm grown. I'm going to start my, they don't tell me. I'm going to prove them wrong. That's the devil. And bind him in Jesus' name. So I woke up that morning. I said, okay, Lord, what's going on? I went to praying again. Nothing. I'm like, Lord, now this ain't right. Now, I hear from God. I hear from God. Now, so, 
I had to change the way I was praying. Y'all laughing. I had to change the way I was praying. I said, okay, God, listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to set myself. I'm going to shut this soul up because the soul will try to take you and get you getting your emotions like you really getting in. That's your soul. You ain't getting in. You hallelujah. No. No. That's your soul. You're not getting in. Okay? You're not going to hear from God because he's a spirit. Right? So I could just keep going and I'm pressing, I'm praying. I'm starting sweating. I know the air on. I'm sweating. It's 72 degrees in my house. I shouldn't be sweating. Sure. So I sat down. I said, okay, Lord, I'm sweating now. Amen. So I sat down. I said, okay, Lord, what did I do wrong? What's the problem? See, some of us are not doing that. You keep going along, and you're lasting off the last words you got instruction from. The last time you heard God, and you keep going along like you're hearing something, and there's nothing coming. Set yourself and ask God what's wrong. At, but it's his desire to prosper you. It is his desire to increase you. It is his desire to make you a praise in the earth. The Bible says that through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It is, through, it is his desire to do that through you, Miss Garrett. It is his desire to do that. It is his desire to give y'all children. Right? So you sit down and you say, okay, Lord, what's wrong? So I sat still. He said disobedience. I said, well, now you want to speak? Amen. All right. Okay. He said disobedience. I said, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? He was like, you going to start a business without a job? I said, well, Lord, I said I was still going to keep looking for a job. He said, no. The instructions were to find you another job, paying more than what you make now, then I will give you another step to do what you're trying to do. See, we try to half do instructions, and you end up with nothing. Now, how many of you know I could have kept going in my flesh on Monday, and I would have been broke? I'm for real. We, now, I don't confess that I'm broke. I never confess that because I'll never be broke another day in my life. But if you're in disobedience, you're going to be broke. Mump your confession. If your heart ain't right, you're going to be broke. Come on now. You confessing, I'm ne- I'm my business, my, your business is not going to prosper if you are not in direct alignment with the instructions you were given. Hear that. Your business will not prosper if these two said something to you and you're not in alignment with it. It's not going to prosper. It's not going to happen. Er, boom, no. No. You sending out all kind of, re- uh, no. It's not happening. So I talked to pastor, I, said, I emailed him, I said, pastor, you know I'm still in faith for my job. My last day is tomorrow. Amen. I told my boss that he emailed me one. I sent him, I sent him like at least four sentences. At least four. He emailed, he emailed me one sentence back. Can the resignation be undone or delayed? <laughs> now, I had already told one of my friends, if he tell me to do that, I ain't doing that. Nah. Shoot. Everybody, they celebrating. They like, ooh, tomorrow's your last day? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Amen. They're like, do you get the job? Yes. Where is it? Mm. God got me. Right? Okay. So I said, he emailed me that. I read that email about three times. It is one sentence. Mm -hmm. Read it about three times. Did I start? Amen. I'm going to set that because one time I went somewhere and preached, y'all. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I preached for a long time, y'all. Amen. I am my father's child. Amen. So I went <laughs> I went and I said, okay. So he sent me that word. And so now I waited till the end of the day to send the email so I wouldn't have to hear it till the morning. So I sent email, can my resignation be delayed or undone? Send, and I walked out of my office. Amen. <laughs> I'm going home. I can check my email from home. I wasn't going to check it. Amen. So now I'm mad. I'm like, Lord. But I remember a word that one of my sisters gave me. She said, because of your obedience, he'll bless you. Because of your obedience, he'll bless you. So I really said, even over this house, because of your obedience, he'll bless you. Right? So I came back to work and I checked my email. I prayed. Now I feel a release. Now when I wake up, the scripture talk to me when I wake up, when I go to sleep. I'm like, well, hey, Jesus. Man. That feel, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about when you really have a relationship with the Lord. It's not no, you're not faking it where you hallelujah. I can sense authenticity. Some of us, hallelujah, pray, you don't have no relationship. Come on. And it's, it's, it's easy to get one. Just admit that you don't have one. Ask somebody how to get one, and you'll have one. But instead, we're so prideful, and we're acting like we're singing. 
preaching nothing. You don't have no power. But we're going to go on in the scripture and figure out why we need power. Y'all stop pulling on. Amen. So I went to, I got my email. She said, well, it's, now I'm emailing HR at this point. You know, I ain't telling nobody at my job yet. I emailed the people. <laughs> Guys, come on now. Y'all, listen, walk with me through this. Just in case HR said no, they ain't got to know that he, they said no and I'm still leaving. You know what I'm saying? I'm still leaving tomorrow. And they ain't got to know HR told me no. I'm just going to peace out. They're going to throw me a little cake, a little party. Amen. Praise God. But HR, <laughs> I'm for real. So I emailed HR. And they said, sure. Just check with Katrina. Mm. <laughs> now, Katrina, my boss, at, my, at the building where I work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, and she has an open door policy. You can talk to her about anything. So I said, oh, Jesus. I said, okay. Now, I walked literally. My office is two doors down from hers. I walked in and out of my office three times. I said, okay. okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'm a king. I'm a king. I'm a king. <sighs> now, I don't have to. I ain't scared to talk to her. But it was pride that was trying to keep me stuck. This was a, I believe, I believe, now I was disobedient the way I did that. I had to go back and God had to redeem me. But it was a test of humility. The Bible says when you, before humility becomes great. Come on now. Hallelujah. A hearted spirit before a fall. So now I know if I would have kept that spirit hardiness, I was on my way to a fall and destruction. I was on my way to the last five rows. Not talking about y'all. Five rows. You know how you hit the last row and you out the door? That's what kind of church we have. You start up here and you, and go on. Amen. But I was on my way to a fall because I was going to say, see, they preaching that stuff. It ain't working. No, I wasn't working. They teaching me to go start a business and I'm trying to start this business and then I fall on my face. No, they said get a job, take your seed from your job and start a business. Still pay your bills and have your seed to sow. It's even above paying bills because God takes care of me. I need seed to sow. Right? I need to be able to sow into other people's businesses. I need to be able to sow into their life. But yet you still, you, it's not working because they told me to do this. No. No, I was, I was wrong, and I had to go back and fix it. So when Pastor released that word over my life, can it be? That was the apostolic, set in order. And so I said, okay, there go the order I needed, praise God, because he operated the apostolic sets order. So I go to my boss. I sat down in, in the chair. So she has a chair right here at her desk, and she's looking at you like this. And I said, hey, Katrina, can I talk to you for a minute? She said, sure, come on in. I sit down. <clears throat> Hey, how you doing? She's like, I'm doing good. What's up? I know you want something. I said, well, is there any way? Now, the devil is like, at least don't do this, man. They're going to look at you crazy. You know, you're going to be embarrassed. Now, we, now I want to do tell you that we can't afford mistakes like this in the kingdom. Right? That's what the Lord said to me after everything was over. He said, at least we can't afford to make mistakes like that. You're too far in the game to be making those kind of mistakes. Right? Now, I'm too far in the game. I'm too far in what I'm doing for the kingdom to be making these kind of mistakes. That whole week was like, I was making decisions. I'm like, what kind of, what's wrong? Come on, come on. Stinking thinking or something. Something creeped in or something. I'm like, what kind of, I'm not even making common sense decisions. It's crazy. So I go in there. I said, all right, look. I said, okay, Katrina, is it possible that I can delay my two weeks or, you know, not going to them? This lady looked at me and said, please, God, do. I said, what? <laughs> she said, Elise, she said, we don't want you to go. Please stay. I said, are you serious? Now, my heart was like, bleep. <laughs> like, ooh. Because she could, that could have went the whole other way. But because the man of God released the word, can it be the apostolic set order even in her heart? The Bible says that the hand of the king is in the hand of God, and he can turn it like the rivers however he please. Come on. So because I'm submitted and I said, okay, go back and do that, I'll go do that. Fine, I'll go do that, okay. So I put my flesh under subjection. I make my soul yield to the spirit, right? Because your soul, that's where that pride is. So I say, no, you yield to the spirit. The spirit, your spirit is humble. Your spirit has humility. Your spirit want to do it right the first time, right? So I knew I couldn't afford it. So I said, okay. She said, well, let's talk. She said, how much time you going to give me? Because now they, they see it on my life. They tell me all the time. They said on my life. They're like, how much time are you going to give us now? Can you give us two years? I said, no, no. No, I can't give you no two years. The Lord told me 30 days, and that don't expire. I'm out the door. Now, nah, come on now. So she said, well, 30 days. I said, I said, Katrina, listen, this is what we're going to do. 
Now, I remember the word with the condo that the Lord said, he will, he will, he will submit to your terms. I remember that word. That wasn't just for the condo. That was because I'm a king, and they submit to my word. I said, okay. So I came, I said, okay, this, can we do this? I said, really, I want to quit because I am actively looking for a job. I was honest with her. Now, I said, but what if I get a call on Monday and I need, a, I need an interview on Wednesday? She said, you can go. Huh? Say what? She said, you have plenty of time, Elise. If you need to leave and come back, that's fine. If you need to take a day off, take it. So Monday, what I did, took a day off. Amen. So she said, okay, if you need a day off, just take it. If you need to do something, take it. I said, really? Like, for real? She said, really, Elise? She said, I'm not trying to hold you back, but we do want you here. So then I said, okay, so I'm thinking the process was done. I came out of the office. She yelled to everybody, she not leaving. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> Amen. But in this house, we learn even on your job, you operate in excellence. You do that even on your job. I don't miss work. I don't call off for no pinky toe. No, I don't call off for a headache. And when I'm there, I do my work, and, I, and I, I give gifts to my boss. You want some breakfast this morning? What would you like? Amen. You hungry? Amen. So I have no, my gifts made room for me. Praise God. We learned that in this house. When they said give gifts to your boss, guess what I did? I gave a gift. Come on now. They talking to us. Now they sheep the sheep. Sheep the sheep. Sheep the sheep. We just having a conversation. Go and do it. What they're saying, it works. So then I'm in my office. I'm leaving out the door. I'm going to go take my clients somewhere. My clients, they was happy. They was like, oh, Miss Elise, please stay till I go. Just stay till I leave. Just get me out of here. You know, I heard that you be helping people. Get me out of here. I said, okay, I, I, I'm going to help you. I'm going to get, now, you, you stay up in drugs. Now you get your own place and let it go now. They said, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So then I'm walking past. I had no idea of the conversation, but the Lord allowed one of my sisters to hear the conversation. HR called Katrina. And gave her, you know, was like, excuse, how long is she going to be there? What, what's going on? She was like, she's staying, and she can stay as long as she want. I like her work, and I want her here. And I hope she stay permanently, anything else. I was like, well, suck it up. <laughs> amen. So when I went to my office, I was doing files and doing all my work. Just amen. Because I'm going to be faithful. But that was a test of humility. And sometimes every day, we have these same tests everywhere that we go. You have these same tests of will you listen to what they say or will you do what your flesh telling you to do? Because it's not in your spirit. The Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. So it's a test for all of us, a test of humility. Pass the test, right? So I know that there's some great reward because I passed the test of humility. Now, I did make a mistake that I shouldn't have made. I should have sought the Lord a little harder before I did that. But God will redeem your life from destruction. So that's an encouraging that you know right now today that you're in some mess that you know you shouldn't be in. Confess it to God. Talk to the man and woman of God. It will heal you. You're in some stuff that you knew that you, oh my, they're going to be. Now I'm thinking the devil whooping me like they're going to be so disappointed. I'm supposed to be preaching on Sunday. What is going on? They're going to think I'm not working my faith. The devil is a lie. They don't even think like that. They don't even think evil. Don't let somebody come in your ear from that. They don't even think like that. They don't think any evil. So you go to some of us, we sit in our mess and you're suffering in silence because you won't open your mouth and say, I don't know what I'm doing. It's not working for me. My soul out of control. I don't know how to turn up. Come on now. I don't know how to turn off these emotions. My emotions all out of whack. I don't know what to do. My flesh rising up when I'm asleep. Come on, somebody. But you won't say nothing because you're too prideful. You got religion. It's to the point where in your heart, it's so much religion in your heart that you, it, you bound by your religion. It's so much religion that where you come from, it's so much religion in your heart that you're bound by it. You're bound by a fake praise. You're bound by a fake word. You're bound by it. But I'm telling you, if you open your mouth and ask God to deliver, he will come through. Come on, you're suffering and you're not saying anything. There is a gift of healing, a working of miracles on their life. But you come and, Pastor, I did this. That's the system that he set up for you. That's your point of contact right there. Right? That's the one that he set before you. You see what's happening on their life. It's evident. They flying all over the place preaching. What you mean? I'm going too. Amen. 
But I'm telling you, it takes a humility to be like that. To be 26, a grown woman, and have to go tell a, a, a come on, yeah, yeah. sir, listen, sir, mom, dad, whatever you want me to call your prophet, apostle, whatever. I see it on you. I need some help. I done made a mistake. I done did what I shouldn't do. And here I am. Here go the situation. Help me. Help me. I can pray by myself. You prayed by yourself and you ended up in the mess. That's how you ended up there. You prayed by yourself. I can pray by myself. I don't need nobody to pray with me. I don't need none to pray for me. Now, I've been there. I've been there. I, w- I would been there where I was, I was, I loved them, but I was like, man, shoot, I'm grown. Now, I'm grown. It was a heathen. I didn't even know no scripture before I got here. And now, five years later, I'm trying to be all, I got the word in my heart and I can do this. No. No. Now, you, you get a little word, a little manifestation. Now, you, I can do this thing. Well, no, their instruction is what got you the house. Their instruction is what will keep you in the house. Come on. Their instruction got you the marriage. Right? That their instructions brought you to Boaz. I got a testimony about that Boaz girl. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about the Boaz. Praise God for my Boaz. Don't get nervous. He ain't here yet. Y'all would have seen him in the house. He ain't here yet. Amen. But he coming. Don't get nervous. He ain't here yet. Amen. So... Pastor Jim came and talked. That man taught an awesome word about being deceived. Let me tell you, I love that little, that, he made me want to go eat right. He lost 60 pounds, man. Shoot. That ain't all I took for the message, but that was just real good. So he taught a message, right, about being deceived, right? And so I had a word released to me about three times. Your bow ass is coming this year. Your bow ass on the way. Your bow ass, your bow ass. Now, before I even think about no bow ass, I was trying to you know, get this money. It was Amen. But I said, okay. That's a part of the plan. I'm going to be an expectation for my man of God to come. Praise God. Amen. So he got up here. He's teaching. And he gave a testimony, right? So the pastor Kim comes up to me. She said, at least, now she happy. She was like, girl, get you some magazines. I said, okay, mom, I'm going to do it. She said, and now, make me buy me a dress. Don't be throwing no. I said, okay, million dollar wedding. I heard that. Yeah. So she said, now, get off the internet now. God don't need no help. Now, this is my instruction. This, she was talking to me. She didn't say over to here, get off. No, she said it to Elise. Get off the internet. God don't need no help. Y'all know what I mean by get off the internet? P-O-L, Christian mingle, all them people. Yeah. I was. I don't have no shame because my manifestation is great. I don't have no shame. Listen. So I said, okay. So he get up here. And y'all know the testimony he gave, right? He said the young lady from his church. Met a dude over the internet, flew him down, met the pastor, and it worked for them. And I believe it worked for them in his house. So when I got home, guess what the devil showed up? You see, I told you it could work. You see that, you know, they gave a testimony about, you know, she found him and they flew down, met the pastor, and his pastor was okay with it, and it's working. I still, I play blessings over their marriage. I don't even know them, but bless them, Right? I said, no, devil, the instruction for this Elise, for this house, was to get your behind off the internet and allow God to do the work. There are sometimes that you're allowing other messages from other people to creep into your psyche, and it's warping what you believe. For this house, he said, get off the internet. So for this house, he said, tithe. And so, so what happens is when you miss a week of tithing, it'll be okay with you in your heart because you heard about that new goofy grace teaching. So now it's kind of okay. You repent a little bit, but it don't really affect you as bad as it did. Because you've been listening to that other stuff? Turn that mess off. In this house, we tithe. In this house, we sow. In this house, we pray. In this house, we give. In this house, we live holy. Amen. So I heard that word, and I said, no, devil. No. I mean, for real. He was like, I had no got good at that thing. Now, I wasn't on the internet finding no stuff. No. I didn't know. I mean, you had to be believers for the Holy Ghost. You, same qualification I got in person. Same thing I had on the internet. I don't play that. Ain't no funny business. However, the instruction was for Elise was to get off the internet. It worked for that house. So don't let with somebody, one of your friends from another house, trip you up. Well, your pastor say you got a tithe? Well, girl, no. Well, girl, no. Well, girl, no. The pastor say you shouldn't watch um, half, the have and the have-nots. You shouldn't watch that? Girl, no. They ain't going to do nothing to you. 
They ain't going to do nothing to you. You can watch this just TV. No, it's just TV until your husband stay out too late and now you nervous if he cheating or not. But if you would never watch that, you would never have that problem. Come on now. If you would have never watched that, you wouldn't be nervous. Now you're looking at your kids crazy. You wouldn't have watched that. You wouldn't have been nervous. I'm serious. I went to my grandma's house. My grandma, y'all, watching it. My grandma. So I'm sitting on a recliner chilling. Boom. Chilling. I'm at my, I'm at my grandparents' house. You know how you get to your grandma's house. You just be chilling. You digging your nose. They don't care. Amen. So I'm chilling, right? And the TV come on, and it's... This look like Young and the Restless. What is you watching? She said, oh, the half, the half, not, oop, oh, my mind. I went all the way to the spare bedroom, and just what happened, Jaquetta called me. I said, oh, praise God. Hello? <laughs> hey. How you doing? And normally you don't talk on the phone at my grandparents' house because you're there to spend time with them, but they're doing some stuff that I don't agree with. Hey, sugar. And I started talking about the word of God a little louder than I should have. Yeah. The Lord said, and the TV went off. All right, Jaquette, I'm spend time with my grandparents. I'm going to call you back. <laughs> Amen. Because in their house, in their church, they, they, that's fine for them. But in this house, listen, there's assignment so big on your life, Deacon. There's so assignment so big on this ministry. You cannot afford to do what the norm is. You have to be above the norm. You have to make sure that you are peculiar people. Our children cannot afford to be like the other children. Your children can afford to do what they do. We cannot be afford to say what they say if we want the move to happen like it's supposed to happen. You can't afford the haves and the have-nots. You can't afford Medea. He said, I used to watch Medea and be cracking up laughing. He said, a man in the dress, you shouldn't be watching that. Boop. Yeah. Now, did I give it away to somebody else? Nope, I threw it in the garbage can because I don't want nobody else watching it. Amen. So for this house, we have to understand that the assignment on this house is that great, that we can't be bound up by religion. We can't be bound up by your own emotions about what you think is right, about what you feel and what you say. But what you say, what did the word of God say, and do that. You see what you say when it got you. You hear me? Amen. Amen. Let's go back to Luke 25. We're supposed to be doing a textual message, y'all. Matthew 25. Amen. Now we're going to go down to the next one. Now we did, the, we, did, we did the foolish and the wise. We're talking sheep to sheep, right, y'all? Now when y'all see me that sweet sitting down, don't be acting like y'all want to speak to me. Y'all better say, hey. Now you love the law, you will not be offended. Just stop doing the mess and let's roll on. Because my faith is not for 17%. My faith is not for 8%. My faith is for 100% tithing, 100% moving by the Spirit. My faith is for 100% of us, the sheep, doing what we're supposed to be doing. So if I got to stand up here and tell y'all all my business, I'm going to do it because my faith is so that we can all move into what God is saying. Come on now. Amen. Y'all sweating out my veins. Praise God. I love y'all. Okay, sheep to sheep. Now we're going to go down to the next one about these uh, talents. This money thing. Amen. I like money, y'all. Amen. Praise God. We got to have it. Because I'm not trying to win people to Christ and get a halfway house over here on, on you know, not until we're a seamless city. Now I'm believing for a seamless city, city where the north look like the south. But until the manifestation comes. I'm going to put people on 9 to 4 for something. Amen. Amen. And if we got to go south, we're going 54th or deeper. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm on, hey. Now, you make your place look like Eden. Praise the Lord. But believe God. They said believe God that you're not supposed to walk out and see trash in the yard. I don't want to walk out and see trash in the yard. I don't have the trash problem. I have a duck problem. Every time they want to eat, I'm like, dude. I just fed y'all last week. And they meet. It was so funny, y'all. The duck came at the same time the next day. I fed him at five, so I calculated. It was, he came back to my door. They, I ain't even there. I'm pulling up. It's five, so they sitting there. Because God was supplying their needs, praise God. Amen. So, the next one. It said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country. This is verse 14, y'all. 25, 14 who called his own servants, 
So he called his own servants, the servants who he knew had the ability to do what he was about to tell them to do. God is calling us his own servants in this ministry who he knows has the ability to do what we're supposed to do. His own servants. He's calling his own the Baker family. That's his own servants. You hear what I'm saying? He's calling you, his own servants, to do what he can do. And he knows what potential is on the inside of us. Why does he know what potential? Because he would know what's word is coming to us. Right? Amen. So he said he had five talents. He gave five talents. Y'all know the story. He gave five, two, and one. Five, two, one. Now the five and two were straight. They came back. When he came back on his horse, he was like, all right, what did y'all do? Run me my stuff. What kind of manifestation did you get, Latoya? That's what God going to ask you. Did you sing to the city or did you sing to the nations? What did he call you to go? What did you do with the five talents he gave you? We're not just talking about the talents of singing, but it's the word that he gave you. Right? So he said with the five talents. So then he said, when the five came, I bought you five. I got five more. Here you go. You gave me two. I got two more. Then the wicked servant had one. He didn't get no manifestation. That's what that is. He didn't get any manifestation. And what God is saying in this church, you have people leave. Some people left because they're offended and they need to come back. Amen. We understand that. We pray them on back into the house. But some people left because this is a five-talent ministry. You can't have a one-talent mindset. Come on now. You can't have a five. This is a five-talent ministry. You got to have a five-talent mindset. And if you, now we all come in here, we all one talent. Now, I came up in here, I didn't have no talents. I was like, what is this? Preaching the kingdom, what is a kingdom? I started thinking about Mother Teresa them and stuff. You know, I ain't have no talents. I didn't have any of that stuff. But as I sat and received, I'm telling you, I read the Bible like, I read the Bible more than I ate when I got here. Just reading. I ain't have no job. So what am I going to do? Read the Bible. What I was doing, I couldn't do that no more being saved, so I'm reading the Bible. Learn how to prosper the right way. Amen. So then we had talent. So in this ministry, what God is saying is that this, he told me himself, this is a five-talent ministry. That's the highest. This is a five-talent ministry. Now, there are other ministries that are two-talent ministries. Not to negate them because when they came back and he gave them back two more, he was pleased. He said, well done, that good and that faithful servant whom I'm well pleased for your two. Amen. But this is a five. And how do we know it's a five? Search the internet and look for eight ways to cash your bread. She did it. Pastor Kim did it. She didn't find nothing. Search the internet and look for any other message that's being taught the way it's being taught here. Can you find that? No. Now, when you die and go to heaven, because that's what we're going, everybody here saved, we're going to heaven. If you're not, we're going to get you saved at the end of the church. Amen. You better go to heaven. So when you die and you go to heaven, I don't care if you're 12, you need to die and go to heaven. So now, when they die and went to heaven, you're going to be held accountable for the word that you received. This is the word that we receive. This thing is spiritual. You are a spirit first. Come on time to church. I'm on time. Every time I'm even a minute late, I get convicted because I'm not late at work. I'm not late at work. I'm not too tired to wake up on Monday morning and go to work. So I'm not going to be too tired on Sunday morning to wake up and come to church. Then some of us, we say, well, we have, I'm not, listen, I love all y'all. And I don't be watching when nobody come to church because my eyes be closed, I be praying. So I'm not watching you. But this is what the Lord says, say, so I'm going to say it. I got that sent to me twice this morning. Say what the Lord says, say. So I'm telling you, so we'll say, okay, we have excuses. I have children. It's hard for me to get my children ready and be to church on time. But it was not hard for you to get your children ready, take them to school, and go to work. Y'all went two different places. But it was not hard for you to see them off to the bus stop, for you to wake them up in the morning, and, hey, it's time for you to go, and you still be on time. Come on now. Because I want to look up on Wednesday and everybody be here at 630. If you're not at work, you need to be in here at 6.30. I heard I wasn't here at 6.30, and when I got here, I was mad. They say the, the foundations of this place was shaking. I say, man, the devil manipulated me. I was at home looking up some stuff. I was like, okay, I'm beat up, I'm beat up, I'm beat up. And got here a little after, amen, and I missed the prayer. We can't afford stuff like that to be happening. We can't afford not to be because if you don't know how to pray, when you come here, there are people up here praying, and it's showing you how to. That's how I learned how to pray. I promise you, didn't nobody sit down and say, okay, I knew I had to have the word. Barbara taught me how to, you have to pray the word. You can't pray your mind, you got to pray the word. She taught me that. But I didn't know how to hook up a shot and go in until I came here. I used to see Brother TJ dancing and praise. I'm like, well, that's how you pray? Amen. Now, I'm not copying off of anybody. 
but you need to learn something. I didn't know how to believe God. I didn't know how to press in. So every time you're saying that I don't know how to press in, I don't know how to do it. But every time there's an opportunity for you to learn, you're not here. You're not serious. Come on now. I want to see everybody in here at 930 praying as corporately as them. It's corporate prayer, not prayer team and praise and worship team prayer. It's corporate prayer. We need to all be in here pressing in because God, if you're in this house, God called you. I don't care where you came from. I don't care where you think you're going. If you're here today, God called you to this ministry. There is something on the inside of you that he's trying to get out of you that we need in this ministry. The Bible said, the, the, man, if you read the mission and the vision, it had transitional houses in the mission and the vision of this church. Now, do you think Pastor Finn go open up a transitional house? No. It had apartments for this ministry. That's what the, the prophet said. Do you think Pastor Finna go and open up some apartments for people? No, but do you know he sent somebody in here that has a desire for transitional housing and to see people's lives change? I'm just adding to the vision. So there's something on the inside of you that God is trying to develop in you to add into the vision. Come on now. They can't do it by themselves. They will. But they can't. God will. I don't want. Listen, I was sitting up in here and I was at work and one of my clients came to my office. And we used to talk about scripture when she got out of school. And I started talking to her about the assignment and how I was nervous. The first time I came up here and preached, y'all scared me. Y'all scared me today. <laughs> I was scared of y'all faces. So I was like, amen, 30 minutes, bam, gone. But I'm telling y'all, she said to me, and I'm saying it to you, this is a, now, I could have I had, had low regard for her because she was a client at the turning point. I did not. God can use anybody. God can use anybody to say to get to you what he need. I'm not saying use anybody for his ministry. I ain't say that. But get to, to get to you what you need to hear. God will use out of the mouth of babes. He'll use anybody. She said to Elise, at least if you keep being afraid, if you keep stopping and starting, God will send another. So if you keep faking it, God will send another. If you don't get to the root of the issue, get that mess plucked out of your heart, God will send another. And you'll see, she said, at least you're going to look up and see you walk right past you. I said, the devil is a lie. <laughs> Who? I'm finna pray. Hold on, Baba Sata. When they said 10 millionaires, I, listen, if somebody walk in here that's not from this ministry with 10, and they come in here and become, I better be one of them. Because I'm not gonna see me walk past me. Don't see you walk right past you because you won't open your mouth and say something. Come on now. I heard another word. And I was at this deliverance training course because I know that, what, that's, I know, I, amen. So I'm at this course. This lady said, living in your father's flow. So I went back and I said, okay, let me go see. She ain't really explain, but I said, okay, let me go see what that is. Living in your father's flow is whatever is on their life, you just flow in it. It's like a stream of water. They're the bulldozers. They tear it down. We just get to walk behind them and say, yeah, yeah, Amen. Praise God. Bring them some water. Here you go. Amen. It's so easy to be a sheep. Sheep to sheep. It's so easy to walk behind them foot to foot, tie to tie, shirt to shirt, skirt to skirt. It's so easy to do it. You just submit yourself and obey, and then you turn around and you get everything that God has for you because of what they're doing in their prayer time. And you continue to pray for them and bring them water and strengthen them and so into their life so that their ministry can keep going so that your ministry can be developed. Come on now. It is so easy to get real about this thing. To say, okay, pastor, listen. I went in there. Man, I went to him one time. We were sitting right here. This is about three years ago. Sitting right here. I'm boo-hoo crying. Dad looked at me like, girl, what's wrong with you? And she, he looked with that daddy face like, what's wrong with you? I said, Pastor, my mind, man, my mind. I'm serious. I said, Pastor, my mind, I can't. I don't, I, don't need, I don't know what to do. I'm crying. I'm about to cry right now. That thing was so deep. I was like, Pastor, man, my mind, I'm trying to hear what you're saying, but it ain't. He said, okay, let's pray. He went to pray for me and laid hands and was praying. He heard a word that set me free. He said, you need to be settled in the love of God. But I would have never known that if I wouldn't have went and said, Pastor, I'm trying. I'm tired. I'm tired. Physically exhausted, mentally frustrated because I'm not seeing what you're saying. So he said, you need to be set in the love of God. I said, okay. So I took that word for about two weeks and prayed it in and it stopped. Yeah. I'm going to tell my business. Mm -hmm. So then the next year, guess what happened? Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Lord, I'm pressing in. Oh, Jesus. Now this time I ain't go to him because he going to already tell me what he already told me. 
So I'm just going to go back to the same instruction I got last year and go back on this year. But we can't afford lapses in time like that in this season. We cannot afford mistakes like that for you to hear a word, and then five years later, you're going to be like the foolish virgin. Because the Bible, the Bible says that when a man came, they went and knock on the door. He said, turn away from me. I don't know you. He said, I don't, I don't know you. So we're preaching prosperity. We're preaching overflow. We're preaching press in. And you're trying to do it three years from now, and we all up here starting business, got million-dollar Fortune 100 companies, and you've been sitting here the whole time. That Listen, come on now. He's merciful, but you can't be silly. He's merciful, but you can't be dumb. So if he's saying, okay, get the job. So then I say, okay, Lord, I need more seed to sow. Get a better job. I heard it from God himself. Then Pastor Kim came to me and said, at least you got 30 days. Now, did I make the 30 days? Nope. Why? Because I didn't do it when she said it. Two weeks later, I started looking. I can't afford that in the kingdom. I repent and I roll on, but I cannot afford those kind of mistakes in the kingdom. Because today I should have been telling y'all a testimony about how I increased $20,000 on a new job. But today I'm not telling you that testimony because I waited two weeks before when she said, do it when she said it. Now, am I going to come back and tell y'all, tell me, you better believe it. But I should have been telling you that today. Right? It, the 10 million that should have been here. And when we shouted and we believed when he said it in 2009, we should have been here. But today I'm winning your soul today. Today, somebody going to leave and read their Bible. Somebody going to leave and, and get the, on that paper and find them eight steps. Okay, now I get this sin out because I don't want to keep, I don't want to keep drinking. Come on, it's people drinking. I don't want to keep drinking. You, you don't want to keep drinking. You don't want to have to, it's a, you're bound to it. When you get off of work, you got to have a bill. You bound. That's not a choice. You're bound to it because you know it ain't right. You went, if you, listen, if you do anything that you wouldn't sit right here and do it, it's wrong. It's wrong. So if you know you want to bring no bill up in here and me get your feet up, don't do it at home. This costs too much. If you want to participate in the anointing, it costs too much. But there's an anointing for deliverance on this house that'll set you so free. You'll look at a bill and get man. Even a bill on somebody's breath will make you mad. Man, you stink, man. Man. Man, you gotta learn. You'll be so free. You have to in your mind learn. How to have compassion. Because now we got to have compassion for people, and that's right. We have compassion. We don't hold people according to their sin. I don't look at people and see their sin. I look at people and see the vision for what God has for them. So when I'm looking at people, I'm like, I'm so free from that. I don't understand how you're still struggling in that. And you're right here with me. You're right here with me. But am I going, no, you know, I got this. I'm, I ain't struggling. You better find yourself. No, sheep to sheep. I'm going I'm to say we need to stop doing that mess. We need to stop. It's not a sin to drink. Did you see Jesus make one, drink wine or did he make it? Now, nah, you get all technical. You talk to Pastor Kim, she's going to talk about the water filtration system and all that. I'm like, whoa, I just ain't going to drink. Amen. I'm just not going to drink. I don't even know the, the whys and the who's and why they did it then. I'm just not going to drink. So you bound to smoking. Get free. At least how do I get free? It get, sometimes you get something so rooted in you, a deliverance has to come. I knew that that unsettled and the love of God had gotten so far in me, and I let it sit dormant for so long because we relaxed on it. You didn't see, you didn't catch it when it first started happening. Now you need a whole full team to pray for you and to get it out of you. Now don't be shamed because I wasn't shamed. I felt so bad about at least, and it wasn't bad for my past sins. I knew what I had done. I don't even have to talk about that. I knew what that was, and I knew I got born again and became a new creation. I, I knew that. I got that. But right now, today, see, the devil was sin. He's launching attacks at you that your religion can't stand up to what the devil is sending. You need the word of truth to quench every fiery dart. Right? Listen, it can't stand up to what the devil is shooting at you. Listen, because you're in this house, you said, heard them say, because you're in this ministry, there's an attack on your life. But if you got the word of truth, he can't do nothing with you. He can't bring nothing to you. He can't do anything with you because you got the word of truth living on the inside of you. You don't have a praise in your mouth and your heart is far from him. When your heart and your mouth are aligned together, the devil can't stand you. He can't stand. Shut the devil can't stand you. He appreciates your authenticity. The Lord says he appreciates your authenticity. He appreciates because he watched you come from the back row late. Now you're on the praise team. He appreciates your authenticity. 
Hallelujah. And for that, he says he'll bless you. Hallelujah. He appreciates authenticity. Mary, the Lord says because your heart is pure, he'll bless you. Don't let it get tainted by anybody else's conversation. Because your heart is pure, he'll bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This intercession, right? Praise the Lord. I'm telling you that this is the time for miracles. This is the time for overflow and breakthrough. I wish I can see, I can't make you see it. You got to see it for yourself. But believe me when I tell you, you will not want to miss what's about to happen. The virgin missed because she was lack of preparation. I'm telling you, get your oil, get you some word in your mouth, in your heart, get you some stuff going on, and it'll happen for you. Amen. So we go back to the talent. So we went over, you cannot have a one-talent mind in a five-talent ministry. You can't have that. Now, when we start, what do we have to happen? What has to happen is Romans 12, 2 has to happen in your life. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So now you have to go back and renew your mind. Go back and renew. Now you heard some stuff. You heard what wasn't right at your old church. You heard that women shouldn't be preaching at your old church. Come on now. You heard that at your old church that you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't want all that money. You heard that at your old church. You got offended when you heard it here. But I'm telling you, kill that devil. Kill that devil because this is a culmination age where everything is going to, the former and the latter together, where it's going to be healing, prosperity, and deliverance all in one. Hallelujah. This is a time where God has called you out. Hallelujah. Paulette, God called you out. He said, stop going back. He's called you out. He's called you out. I don't care what they say. He's called you out. But you have to choose. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. You have to choose to be chosen. The way you choose to be chosen is you choose to fast and pray. You choose not to go there anymore. You choose not to be around them anymore. You choose not to say, I'm not going back. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. And so you're going to like it. Hallelujah. I can get up in anybody's face because I don't think nobody can whoop me. I'm just saying. Amen. And why they can't whoop me? Because I ain't going to fight nobody. Praise the Lord. So listen. Amen. So what I'm telling you is you choose to be chosen. I got in my, living, I got in my room one day and I said, devil, we done. I divorce you. We have no relationship. There's nothing on the inside of you from me. Now at that time, I'm telling you the truth. My account was negative. And I knew it was because of my own negative behaviors. Right? But we can't afford this in the kingdom. So I went and I said, so, and I talked, see, you can get in everybody's face, but you won't get in your own face. I said, so, you're going to believe the word of God. We're going to do the word of God. You're not going to ask nobody for nothing. Now, it was, now I could have went to somebody and asked them, can I borrow? Can I have? Can I do this? But I got tired of, can I borrow? Can I have? And can you? No. Because I am who I am, there's an authority in my mouth that will pull money out of the heavens and supply every need that God has. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to can you have, can you borrow, and can you do. You don't have to live from paycheck to paycheck. You don't have to. Because the word in here says that you have more than enough and plenty in store. Hallelujah. You don't have to live like that. You choose to live like that. So I got in the mirror with my own self. I was going to do a self-deliverance. What? I said, okay, there's an anointing on my life to deliver. At least you finna get delivered. So I'm here to tell you that you better not call nobody. You're not going to ask anybody. Can you have? Can you do? I don't care. If, if the account negative, I don't care. The Lord will redeem my life from destruction. I will believe the word of God. I will believe. I have got to believe. My mama needs me to believe. Your cousins need you to believe. This city needs you to believe. There is a, listen, there is a parade coming up on this month. They need me to believe. Because they need to understand that you can be free from homosexuality. They need me to believe. They need you to manifest everything that God has for you. You are needed in this kingdom. He says, he said to me yesterday morning, he said, Elise, I have given you permission to prosper. What you say? I'm gone. Let's do this. But I got and I said, I say, I refuse to borrow, to ask, or to do anything. My sister don't let me hold whatever. If I came to Lamika, she'll, whatever, Lee, okay. You ain't got to explain nothing to me. I'm just sewing. No, I'm not doing that. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I got here one Wednesday night, gas tank on E. Now I can ask Miss Pauline, whoever, Toy, let me give you $10, ma'am, gas. Just gladly. 
but I'm not on that. That level is over for me. That level is done for me. I, you can when you choose, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. The level of words you pray in, the level of words you meditate on, you choose your level of faith and your glory to glory. It don't take eight years to go from level to level and glory to glory. It's up to you and how much word you meditate on. The Seraphonician woman pulled from behind the cross because she believed. We need to pull our prosperity into existence because we believe, and you do it with the word of God. Pauline, is, come on now. You need to pull it into existence. Reach in, find out what's stopping you, and pull it into existence. Hallelujah. Find out what's stopping you. Go and confess it, whatever you got to do. I don't care what it is, religion, whatever. Find out what's stopping you because I already told you that it's time for you to prosper. Find out what it is. Hallelujah. 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 God is in this. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, I got here that Wednesday night. My gas tank was on E. I said, okay. The gas tank on E. I sat right there where Ed was sitting. Miss Oliver was sitting right in front of me. That's grandma. Y'all, that's grandma, y'all. I know I can go to grandma. She always asks me, everything all right? You okay? I'm, I, Mom and dad, they told me they self, listen, don't suffer. Don't, you need something, we got you. Right? But I knew that this had came because of my own lack of self-control. My, your lack of the fruit of the spirit is keeping you out of your promises. Self-control, shouldn't, I shouldn't have bought that. Come on now. So I'm sitting there, I'm all right, Lord, my tank on E, I'm not asking nobody for nothing. You not, at least you better not fix your mouth to ask nobody for nothing. I don't care if you put, put all the way, the Lord will get you there. You better not ask nobody for nothing. But guess what? When I say nobody, he meant a person. I asked him. I asked him. I said, God, now I'm a cat. Listen, now, I did some things. I'm, I'm sorry. I spent it. Now, we can't afford mistakes like that in the kingdom. I bet I won't do it. Not never no more. Not never no more. So I'm sitting there. Church over. I'm praising. Don't nobody know what's going on. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm praising. I'm thanking God for the rain, the form, and the ladder. I'm praising Latoya. You're singing. I'm trying to keep up. I'm out of breath. I still don't know how she do it. I'm singing. <laughs> Amen. So church is over. At least you better not fix your mouth to ask nobody for nothing. He will honor you. I said, all right. I said, okay, bye. That's when Miss Oliver just got her 2014 Chevy Tahoe. I was shouting. Well, hey, man. Now, my car don't have no gas, but I'm going to shout. I'm going to rejoice with those who rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to rejoice with those who rejoice. So I'm shouting praise. I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, Miss Oliver, Grandma, that's what I'm talking about. Do that thing. Some people had sown into her life that day. They were walking, bringing the offering, dropping money in her lap. Boom, boom, whatever. I'm praising. I'm like, Lord, I wish I strengthen me to sow. Amen. I'm leaving church. I hug her. She hugged me. She said, at least hold on. The Lord told me to give you everything they just gave me. He told me to give it to you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I made a decision that I was not going to ask anybody, but God was going to deliver. God himself was going to deliver. I'm telling you, get your faith on. Get your face on. Tell the devil, no, I will not drink. I will not smoke. I will not let you make me fornicate. I will not let you make me spend my time. I will not make, let you make me eat my seed. I will not let you make me because this is the time for prosperity. This is the time for overflow. And I will do everything that he said I would do. Hallelujah. This is my time. I was praying, I think, this is my time. This is my time. The, the, look, listen, listen, when you find the devil, he must pay you 70-fold. I was not born again. I was, I was in sin for 20 years. I got saved right before my 21st birthday. I ain't never took a legal drink in my life. Praise God. I got saved. I got saved, right? And I realized, well, if the devil stole, he got to pay 7-fold. He got to pay me back for them 20. Shoot. So run me mine. Amen. So you need to get a deter This house is called. This house has been chosen. Not that, listen, the name is exceeding grace. When we say this house, don't get, it's not this house, this building. You have been called. You have been chosen. You have been called for increase. You. Me. These children in here, that, listen, they're called and they're chosen. Put, listen, position your children to hear from God. Make them jokers read Proverbs every day. 
I don't want, I ain't asked you what you wanted to do. I told you what you're going to do. Read Proverbs and write us and tell me what it was about when I get back. Amen. And you better not look it up on the internet. I beat you. <laughs> we have to listen. We heard that word about how Samuel was positioned to hear from God. So you got to take that word that he preached and position your children to hear from God. It's easy being a sheep. It's easy being a sheep. The only hard part is getting yourself out of the way. Get over, get past the seed, you'll get past your need. I have no doubt that y'all heard testimony about my first apartment. The Lord told me to sow my whole check before five days before the rent was due. Sow your whole check and believe me for a miracle. Amen. Sold the check, God got me in that place, no problem. I have no doubt that the seed God revealed it to me when Pastor was preaching on, on Wednesday. That seed helped me get into this condo that I'm in now. That same seed two years ago. Help me get to where I'm, what I'm doing now. So keep sowing. Keep giving. The offering next week should be like, whoa. Because you're making a decision to prosper. You don't feel like you're making enough? Put in an application. Don't get comfortable. I'm not making enough on my job. They ain't paying me enough. Now, they can't ever pay me what I'm worth. That's why we got to have business go get what you can get and do your thing. And he'll give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians and go get your money. But for the meantime, I said, okay, Lord, what you want me to say? Get a job that pay more. You got more of me see to sow. See and see your business. Start your business from there. Now, we worried about the sickle. The sickle. Now, we need a sickle. We need to sow. We need a sickle. Your business is the sickle. I said, Lord, well, do what, what can I do? Now, he's not asking you to go create something that you can't do yourself. He's giving you everything you need to be able to do everything he's telling us to do in this house. For that time, my sickle was my application to go pull in that job that paid more money. Come on now. I pulled it in. Now, I'm taking that money, and I'm going to start. A, listen, I got a hand sickle. Next time, I'm going to have a stick sickle whipping trees down. You got to work with what you have. He's not, God is not asking anything from you that you can't already do. You can already live holy. Holiness is in you. Listen, you can already be real. It's all realness is in the Holy Ghost in you. Realness is all up and through you. You can already do it, y'all. One more section and then I'm going to leave y'all alone because I'm pretty sure I've been preaching a long time. I just get excited, y'all. The Lord is good. Amen. Shoot. Last one. Separation of the sheep and goat. Separation time. Separation time. I looked up sheep and goat. They look kind of alike, but not that much. They look kind of alike, but not that much. So you can see a sheep and a goat. You know what it is. You know when you're hanging with a goat. You know when you're fooling up with a goat. That joke of messy, slimy, you talking crazy. Some of the, listen, for some of y'all, some of the stuff y'all know, you wouldn't know if you weren't hanging out with a goat. If you weren't letting people plant seeds on your garden, you wouldn't know none of that stuff. So some of that stuff that's trying to get in your heart, that's hardening you, for them, you wouldn't even know. Right? Come on now, some of the stuff you wouldn't even know. Now, some people, you have to pray for your brothers and sisters. Some people do get hurt, and all in their feelings get, that's true, you need to pray for them. I remember the first time I got hurt. Man, I was hurt because of my own stuff, not because of them. I was teaching about Daniel. It was about three years ago. I still remember. Never tried to get me out. Man, I was teaching about damn Daniel without spot or blemish. Now y'all see me with all these tattoos. Now my feelings hurt. I didn't know. I was unsaved. Sure. I teach about Daniel without spot and blemish. So don't be tattooing yourself up. <laughs> nah, Jesus, nah. Now, was he supposed to not say that because I had tattoos? No. I was supposed to get my soul together and say amen when he mentioned tattoos. That's it. He's not going to stop changing what the Lord is saying because of your feelings. He wants you to bring your feelings up to what he's saying. Now, I made a decision that in that moment, I would never tattoo myself again. I would not get another tattoo as a born-again believer. You bet I won't. Nah. Shoot. Amen. So then, Pastor Kim come up here a couple of Sundays ago and told do not make, do not carve your body for the dead. It's right here on my arm for the dead. Really? <laughs> I love you, Mom. I am not offended. I love the law. Amen. 
So then, and I know she wasn't talking. They, they don't do that, y'all. They don't do that. They don't do that. They, they love y'all. They love us. So then she said, don't mark up your body. I'm like, all right, you got to go in on that point like that? I mean, jeez. Now, was I offended? No. What happened to me three years ago didn't happen. I was saying amen louder than anybody else. Amen. <laughs> Learn from me. I got to wear long sleeve the word, and it's hot. Don't be tattooing yourself all up. I had to work at a bank. It's hot outside in the summer, and I got on long sleeves. I want to wear some short. I want to wear quarter length. I want to be able to do that. Sure. Nah. Amen. Amen. Now, I run my own business. I still got to be professional. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to wear long, I'm wearing long sleeves for a long time. However, don't let the instruction get in your mind and you turn that thing and pervert it. Don't get offended, y'all. When they come back, you welcome them. Praise God. Amen. So now separation from the sheet and the goat. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and all, and he shall separate, from, separate them one from another as a, shepherd divided, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goat. So when you're going to find out who the sheep and who the goat, it's going to be way late when you're standing before the throne and he's separating you. So what I'm telling you, if you know that you're faking it, stop faking it. Now, we don't know. I'm not trying to know. I'm just trying to encourage you, provoke each other to love and good works. Amen. But I don't want to be, and when you stand at the throne, and because you knew you, you, knew you, you knew you was faking it, and now you get before the throne like you don't did some things, turn away from me, I never knew you work of iniquity. I gave you the opportunity to get free. I gave you the opportunity to not fake it. I gave you the opportunity to be free from, the sh- from shopping. Come on now. That's a real problem. Shopping is a real problem. Just like smoking and drinking is a real problem. And so if you keep spinning your seed and you sit up in church and then that seed word don't bother you, something wrong, you faking it. If you still listen to my men, I love the men of God in this place. We got some men. Man, nigga, let me know. I love you, man. He fixed my car, y'all, man. That good, man. Thank God for him, man. But if you're a man sitting in this house, and he's preaching the word, and you can still go home and watch five hours of football, something wrong. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It should bother you somewhere that you can sit in front of the TV that long, and there was work to do for the kingdom. I'm not saying that it's bad for you to watch football. Catch the last two quarters. The first two, just more anyway. <laughs> Catch the last two, nine. We have to, come on, man, this is serious. If we still watching Housewives of Atlanta, and that's not bothering you, something's wrong. If you still, listen, when I had to sell $3, I was like, Lord, nah. Something was wrong. I, that bothered me. Didn't nobody know I sold $3, but that bothered me. When I had the brain change, that bothered me because I knew, I know that God has given me a word that my prosperity should have been here. But it was me that was the problem. Come on now. That bothered me. If you're not manifesting like you know you should, when they're preaching and it, and it bears witness in your spirit, that's where you at. You need to be doing what they're doing. That should bother you. If you can still do that, come on now. If you can still gossip and it don't bother you, there's a problem. If you can still talk about somebody, there's a problem. I had that issue. I wasn't necessarily like, oh, look at her shoes and da 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 No, I wasn't. I love them shoes. I'm still trying to get this fashion thing together myself. But I wasn't talking about nobody's shoes. I, you can get into the point where you're judging people even spiritually. Even spiritually. Now, you, now, we're supposed to warn each other and all this kind of stuff. But when you warn each other, that don't mean I go tell Deacon Lemon about, about Matthew. No, I go to Matthew, brother, listen, brother. I see we need to come on now, brother. We, we need to be doing this thing. We need to keep it real. Let's be real. That's how you do that, right? You go pray. And you pray for them. Sometimes I remember I heard a word when you see something on somebody, it's not for you to go talk about it. It's for you to go pray. You pray for them. When you see them doing some stuff like, oh, Lord, put them on your mind and pray in the Holy Ghost. So the next time they go to pick up a bit, no, I don't want no bill. Because your prayers, we need to pray for each other. Maya, the Lord says that you're worth more in the kingdom. You are worth more in the kingdom. Come all the way in. You're worth more in the kingdom. Come all the way. He's going like this, all the way in. I don't care what you got to leave behind and who, all the way in. You are worth so much more in the kingdom. Amen. 
So listen, I'm telling you, this is our time. So we go to the wheat and the tent, right? We're going to skip down because I'm, I'm done. Jeez, amen. I see what Pastor be talking about, y'all. Y'all give Pastor a little bit more grace. It's not scary, nah. Well, you be all excited, and I look. Dang. Amen. Hold on. So listen. Let me skip down the road. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give a man of God some more. That ain't right, man. This clock ain't right. Okay. We go down to it says, um, he separate the sheep from the goat. It says, for when I was hungry, you gave me meat. So he separate the sheep on the right hand and the goat on the left hand. The sheep on the right hand, that right hand represents power. Sheep have power. Sheep have power. You have power. The sheep on the right hand, the goat on the left. Who at the right hand of God? Who else? Jesus. And we in him. Sheep at the right hand. Sheep have power. Amen. Amen. So it go down, and he said, shepherd us. And then he said that, for when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came unto me. So it's not about, some, sometimes we can judge. I was judging my progress by my manifestation. I kept judging my progress like, well, Lord, people telling me, at least, you know, you're growing. You got the word on. The pastor told me you're good ground, all this kind of stuff. And I'm measuring my progress by my 94 Toyota. I'm, now, if, do I need a new car? You better believe it. We can't be breaking down and driving up in 94s in 2014. Now we need a new car. Debt free. But sometimes you can get into a place where you're judging other people by their manifestation. Right now, now, now hold on now. Don't get me wrong. You know, a tree buys fruit. Amen. But we're talking about when you're examining yourself. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see whether you're in faith or not. So you start examining yourself, I got this, and I got this, I manifested this, I did this, I got this, I got this, but yet you, it's still hard for you to walk in love. God is love. Come on now. God is not car, God is not house. God is love. Now because you set his, your love upon him and he is love, he gives you all that stuff. But examine ourselves. If it's still hard for me to not pay attention to a suffer wrong. Come on now. God told me one time, he said, at least measure your growth by your ability to, perf- to forgive. Now, I still need the house and the car. And the, I, listen, don't, listen, don't tell Pastor, I told you, y'all need no house. Y'all need house, cars, mansions, and business. And y'all need all that. I ain't saying you don't. But at the same time, you have to let yourself know, measure. You have to grow in those natural things, but you have to grow in your faith. You have to grow in the spirit, too. Because when you stand before God, he's going to ask you about all of your manifestation. Did you show love? Did you give? When it says, and then the goat, they didn't clothe them. They didn't feed them. They didn't do this. Now, if you look at, now, when I was studying this, and this is my last point. When we were studying, it says, when I, was naked, when I was thirsty, you fed me. I mean, when I was hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Now, that word hunger, when I was hungry, the Bible said, when people are hungry, we need to have the money to be able to do something about that. When I was thirsty, the Bible, even, even in the spiritual sense, we can bring them into the house of God. When you, you see people thirsty in, in the city, bring them, the Bible says, I pour water on ground that's thirsty. So you start to thirst. You make, you make people thirsty. That's what it is. You make people thirsty. Remember Pastor talked about that? Because we're salt and light. Your manifestation make people thirsty for what you're doing. Make them thirsty. And then when it talks about when I was sick, you visited me. That's not sick and you came and sat by me and watched the TV with me. No, I was sick. You came and laid hands on me. So we need power. When I was sick, you came and let me know that I can be healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I hate when I find that people be in the hospital don't know. Amen. And I don't be knowing. Don't nobody tell me. They know who I'm talking about. Shoot. I need to go visit and lay hands. Shoot. Amen. You got to find out all late. Amen. That's all right, though. She healed. Praise God. Somebody lay hands. Praise the Lord. So then, now do I have to beat up everything? No. I'm just saying. If you know, listen, we are, we are power machines walking around with all this power. You need to lay hands. Now, when they're sick at my job, I, I ask you, let me pray for you. Not, they look at me crazy like, what? What you going to do? I prayed for one of them. Her fingers was messed. I prayed for her. She was like, see, look. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Prayer do that. Carpal tunnel ain't, that's the devil. That's from the enemy. It's not because you're old and all that. It's the devil. 
And then it says, when I, when I was in prison, you came. This is my favorite one. When I was in prison, you came unto me. When I was in bondage in my mind, you came and helped set me free. Amen. There are people who are bound to certain things, but you come along and you help set them free. But if you're not free yourself, don't you touch me. You need to pray because you got to be clear to hear. There's a message about that, clear to hear. The, remember Pastor said that the soul is the filter for the anointing. If you can still be texting in church, something wrong. Your mind need to be free. Our mind, if you see me with my phone, I'm taking notes. I'm looking up the Greek and Hebrew. Don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm telling you, for real. Because this is time, and when I'm, as I'm closing, this is our time to rise up like never before. This is our time to take this city by force. This is our time to take this city, and we're just going to walk out, and we're full of power. You're full of manifestation. You're worth more in the kingdom. You, you, listen, we got this. Amen. Amen. We have this. 150 of us. Amen, receive. 150 of us in here. You know what 150 millionaires can do in this city? You know what we can do in this city? But we, we minimize it to, to just us and our family and what feel good. Pressing in, the, listen, waking up in the morning before I go to work to pray. That ain't always, that don't always feel good. I'm tired. I'm going to go to sleep. But I know that this city needs what God put on the inside of me. He need what God, they need what God put on the inside of you. Miss Garrett, the Lord says that the power used to be in your hands. It's in your mouth. When you speak, things happen. If you just speak, things will happen. Amen. Listen, I'm saying, let's get with it, y'all. So everybody stand up. Let's pray. Let's pray. Because it's time to get with it. Amen. It's time to get with it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. If you can see what we see, the dreams that people have and the visions that people see, people seeing visions about rain. And that this is the time for this house. If it's the time for this house, that means it's the time for you. Yeah. Dick and Mac, I had a dream you was rich, man. Yeah. Pastor was talking about you to the whole church. and like, see, he been rich for two years. And y'all still, I, was, I woke up like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, it was a word. I would dress with him, but I was corrected. Because in the dream, he was like, he rich. And y'all still ain't going to finish that sentence. Because I don't want to say that. So just take the drink like I did. And I got up and started shouting about my wealth. Praise the Lord. But we're going to pray. And when we pray today, if you know that you're struggling with something, lift your hands to God and get free. The anointing is in this house. It's on my life. Get free. You don't ever have to turn around and go back to where you used to be. You don't leave this place like you came. Find somebody that you know walking this thing out. The cybership is still real. Now, we, we listen, we ain't no pastors up in here. We already have pastors. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We encourage it sister to sister, brother to brother, sheep to sheep. Amen. Nah. Amen. 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 Nah, sheep to sheep. Shoot. Nah. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. I'm for real. For real. Okay, now we're going to pray. And when we pray, it's not a watch Elise pray. Y'all praying the Holy Ghost. And we're going to pray, because I'm going to pray down every stronghold. Every stronghold. Belinda, you stay in. Whatever's taking you out, bind it. Stay in. It's for you, too. This manifestation, this move is for you, too. It's for you, too. It's glory time, y'all. It's glory time. I'm, listen, it's glory time. Come on. It's stuff time. But it's also power time. Because I don't want you. I, listen, if I give a person a car, but they still bound in mind, that car ain't going to do them no good. So if I need to be able to lay hands, get that demon out, and give you a car, fill you with the spirit, and send you on your way. Praise the Lord. Us in here, yes, we can get the manifestation, but if your heart not right. See, listen, when you get manifestation, you got to have faith, and you got to know how to work a principle. We work principles in here. We know how to do that. But we can be good principle workers. And get a lot of manifestation, but your heart has to be right. It doesn't help to have a mansion, but your mouth ain't right. It doesn't help to have a mansion, but every time you invite somebody to dinner, y'all gossiping. And I'm going to just make it, if your heart ain't right, you can only go but so far. 
if you're still bound by this stuff, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because of what's on your life, the devil is angry. He got some stuff, but it's nothing compared to your stuff. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. For my children, y'all need to stand up and stop playing, man. Y'all are children of God and you can't help it. You stand out wherever you go. I'm praying for y'all to have dreams. Of when you want to do something wrong, a dream will wake your behind up. Dreams fill your mind of anointing. Don't just be hallelujah in here. Be hallelujah out there. And I know you ain't shouting in here. I know you falling for whatever out there. My kids in college, y'all need to do, come on now. I told all of them, I don't know if they remember, we was having team talk. I said, by the time y'all get my age, y'all better be right. Come on. Y'all better already have a million by the time you get 26. Because you was here since you, since you were little. But this is glory time. This is a debt-free year. This is the year of deliverance. God's bringing us out. He's bringing us to new levels, higher heights. This is our time. And if you're having a hard time believing that, meditate on the word. Get with somebody who you know walking. If you're having a hard time believing what God's about to do in here, get with somebody who do believe it. And listen to what they have to say. Come ask me. I tell you that God told me himself, he's about to take our pastors. They're going to be an example to, past, to very prominent men and women in the body of Christ. He's, their, their life is going to bring them to repentance. Their life is going to bring T.D. Jakes to repentance. Come on now. We can't have no alliance with the world. We can't be aligning with Oprah. We need to set her behind free. Their li- their, listen, their life is going to win so many. Your life is going to win. This is a Joseph house. This house has a Joseph anointing. It's on your life. Look around you and see how many of your family members standing up in with you. Not that many. But when you go and you win and you say, come, leave all your stuff. Come to a place where I set up. They ain't going to want to be in here with you. We're going to be putting chairs all up here. People going to be sitting on the stage. People going to be laid out for prayer because now they see it on your life. But you have got to believe first. So I'm asking you from sheep to sheep. I'm asking you to get violent first. You have to get violent before you see manifestation. I remember when, let me, I remember when you got violent. You was like, all right, man. Bump this. No more of this. This is what I want. You got your face fixed on your bow ass, and lo and behold, there go Edward singing in the choir. <laughs> For real. I'm serious. She tried other stuff and was playing and dimming and that. De- Come on now, she's got to now. I don't want to tell you the whole thing. She's got to But when she got herself and said, I'm going to believe this word, boom, manifestation came. I'm telling you, let's get for real. Husband and wives, we need y'all. Pastors desires to have a husband and wife over every ministry. Singles, we need us. We the wheels of the We can one that can stay up to 1 o'clock in the morning praying and can't nobody say nothing. <laughs> Amen. Shoot. We the one that can come home. We don't been praying all night. All we can do is a bowl of cereal. That's all right. Because there ain't nobody looking at me like, well, we going to eat. <laughs> we can do that for now. Now, does that mean I don't need to be cooking? No, I need to be cooking because, you know, boy, I, you know, he going to want to eat. You know, I got to get that thing working, so I be cooking my little black and fish, praise God. I hope he like fish. But for real, while I'm playing, I'm serious. Let's do this thing. Let's make a covenant agreement in this place. That time out for the relaxing. Time out for the laziness. There are armor bearers in here. There are preachers in here. There are teachers. There are business moguls in here. There are people, men and women, in this sanctuary right now today. Right now, Jermaine's wife, I don't know your name. The Lord says, the, put down the defense mechanism. He'll protect you. Let them love on you. No more defense mechanism. He loves you and he will protect you. Amen. Let's pray. 
Father God, we come before you, God. We thank you for this house. We thank you for the call on this ministry. God, we thank you for the word that you have spoken to us today. We thank you, God, that you have encouraged, that you have built us up in our most holy faith. And God, I pray that the anointing on my life to win souls has been manifested today in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that when we leave this house, we'll leave this house full of your spirit, that we'll wake up tomorrow ready to pray, ready to fast, ready to give in the name of Jesus. We'll pray. We'll be ready to tear down strongholds and lift burdens in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Malika, the Lord says that you don't know it, everything. You got to let him speak into your life. Let him speak. It's your time of close, close it up and let him speak. Because then when you get ready to talk again, your words will come at that even your very adversary will not be able to contradict or deny. But right now, if you keep speaking, your words are falling upon deaf ears and there's no power. But God says, allow him to fill you up and then speak. Hallelujah. 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 Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Brother Tyrone, the Lord says, don't give up. It says that sometimes hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the tree of life comes, a, when a manifestation comes, it's a tree of life. Don't allow your heart to be sick. Your manifestation will come. What didn't work before, who cares? Your manifestation will come. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this house. We thank you for our man and woman of God. We honor them. We love them. We speak well of them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your spirit, God. We thank you, God, for your spirit. We thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. Angel Wayne, no more heaviness. Put on your garment of praise. Your end will speak no more heaviness. No more depression. No more. Uproot, get it out. No more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tysha, the Lord says, cry out. Real. Real. It may not be all put together like it seems. Cry out real. You're hurting, the Lord says. You need to be healed. But if you keep covering up the womb, it will not be healed. Cry out real and let him heal. Let him change your life. Let him put a love in you for him like you've never had before. You will see it happen in your children. Get it real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more backseat, Brother Tony. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's go. No laziness. Let's go. Hallelujah. You are met. God, I told you before, God needs your strength. You don't let anything hardly get to you. And you're not afraid to say anything to anybody. No more backseat. Drive. 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 You have a prayer warrior for a wife. Drive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for us to be dumb sheep. Let's do this thing, y'all. Let's do it. Let's go. Repeat after me, say, Lord, I'm ready. Use me. Correct me. Open me up. Pour in. I receive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is with us. He's on your side. And don't be afraid to fail that you don't even start. The Lord is with you. He is on you. Y'all seen what happened to me. I made a mistake and it still worked out for my good. Now, it's no time for mistakes. Sit yourself long enough to hear the full instruction. But don't be so afraid that you won't fail.